Here we're going to use what we've learned about the derivative and where maximum and minimum values can occur in order to find the absolute min and maximum values of this function on this closed interval. Now because of the extreme value theorem, we know that an absolute max and a minimum value will exist, whether it's at an interior point or an end point. So our answer is not going to be that there is none. So the first thing we're going to do is find the critical points. Find the critical points. So we do that by taking the derivative. So this is equal to 3x squared minus 4x minus 15. And I think I rigged this so that it factors. So that factors the 3x plus 5 and x minus 3. And solving gives us that x equals negative 5 thirds and x equals 3. Okay, so we know that, so those are our critical points. Um, we know that if a max or minimum occurs, it's going to occur at a critical point or an endpoint. So all we're going to do now is we're going to um, evaluate the function at the critical points. So I'm going to call this the critical point values. So I'm just going to evaluate the function at negative 5 thirds. And I'm going to evaluate the function at 3 and see what I get. So at negative 5 thirds, it looks like the output's about 16.815. And at 3, I get a negative 34. OK, so that doesn't tell me. So obviously, that the, the y value at negative 5 thirds is bigger than the y value at 3. That doesn't tell me that I found an absolute max at, um, it doesn't tell me I found an absolute max at negative 5 thirds because I have to check the endpoints. So I'm going to check the endpoints. So to check the endpoints, I'm just going to evaluate the function at negative 3. And I'm going to evaluate the function at 5. And at negative 3, I get out of 2, and at 5, I get out of 2. So just to summarize a little bit, I like, I'm kind of a visual person. I like to make a little picture. So we know that this is defined in the interval negative 3 to 5. I know that at negative 3 and 5, my y values are 2. And I know that I've got critical points at negative 5 thirds, which is like negative 1 and a third. So that's negative 5 thirds. I know that I've got a y value of 16.815. And I know that at 3, I've got a y value at uh, a y value of negative 34. And so here it's it's easy to see what the absolute min and maxes are. Um, because we know that the absolute min and maxes have to occur either at those critical points or at endpoints. And our critical point value of neg uh, the cr critical point value f of negative five thirds is the biggest one. So we have an absolute max. of 16.815 at x equals negative 5 thirds and the absolute min the absolute min must be occurring at 3 so we have an absolute min of negative 34 at x equals uh, at x equals three. One thing to keep in mind as you do these problems: first of all, I haven't, I didn't, I didn't use the derivative information in between these critical points, which you'll probably end up doing, and I'll show you how to do later. Meaning, you, you're going to make an f prime number line, and you're going to you're going to uh, figure out where the function is increasing and decreasing, and that'll also point you to uh, to maxes and mins more quickly. 
But the, the big thing I want to emphasize is that I checked the endpoints. A lot of students forget to check the endpoints. They just do the critical point values, and they think that that's it. But when you're dealing with a function on an interval, you've got to check the endpoints because it's very possible that your absolute max or min is going to occur at that endpoint. All right, so just make sure you're thorough and you're aware of those special cases. I just want to show you the graph of the actual function to, to see that what we did analytically is confirmed graphically. We've got our absolute max here at negative 5 thirds and our absolute min here at, uh, at 3. And even though the function looks like it goes on, the actual, the actual function ends uh, at, at 5 and negative 3. It's defined on the interval negative 3 to 5. So, it looks like the calculus was working for us. And I'll, again, the, the thing to appreciate is we didn't have to graph it the entire function, but we still were able to get that information using our knowledge of the derivative.